go away and shut up. But I didn't ever want them to shut up. They're too good. Um, Yasmin Bleeth, who was a huge star on Baywatch, was cast without David Zucker ever ever having seen the show. He was just impressed with her acting. <laughs> I don't know what he did there. Um, uh, I've seen Baywatch. There's not a whole lot of acting going on in that show. Would you believe, and I've always said this about Baywatch, because I know we'll never get a chance to talk about it again because of this, aside, you know, unless we do a Pamela Anderson vehicle, which I'm sure we will. Even though, when that show was at its hottest, I was going through puberty. I never watched a fucking episode of it. I watched it, ironically, because of how long it ran. Because I'm assuming that that show got got people through a lot of puberty. Certainly. Both male and female. But would you believe that I did watch it before? I went into that kind of puberty. I watched it in like the first season or two. But what's there to watch? Especially for a child. I, I have no idea for the life of me. I you know what know. I mean? But I, I don't know. Trust me. I don't know what it was that I enjoyed because I remember watching at least the first season because there are actors and actresses that I'm like, oh God, that guy was on Baywatch. How the fuck would I ever know that? Because A, Baywatch, the first season well, how would of Baywatch. you recognize him with clothes on? Well, that too. But the first season of Baywatch, aside from David Hasselhoff, you don't recognize anyone from that cast because when that show got huge, fucking no one from the original cast was there. Except, except for, the for Hasselhoff. Hoff. Except for the Hoff. And I will never insult the Hoff. No. Unless there's a cheeseburger involved. <laughs> Had to do it. Um, <clears throat> Sportscaster Al Michaels threatened to sue over his one day of work. When he found out that fellow sportscaster Bob Costas was being paid fifty thousand dollars, thirty-five thousand more than Michaels for his one day of work on the movie, Michaels threatened legal action. He was eventually paid sixty thousand for his brief appearance. Appearance just goes to show you, kids. Yeah, but then, bitch enough, you get what you want. Yeah, but then and doesn't more. that doesn't that lead Bob to go, hey, wait, I want, I want more now. Probably not, because my guess is Bob Costas is an asshole. Isn't an asshole? Well, I don't know. I've I've heard different. <laughs> Well, then I don't know, because there, no, there was no part to that story. Maybe maybe they just said fuck it and paid them both 60 grand and said shut the fuck yeah. up, both of you. Um, Should have paid them like, the same either way. You just... should have, but still. Um, <clears throat> Matt and Trey, though, diehard fans of Zucker's, uh, admitted during the filming they didn't take the movie seriously. Matt especially saying in an interview in 2009, I get the part and then I have a trailer and I'm an actor. I'm not an actor. Trey is, but not me. Even for him, this was a big step. For me, it was ridiculous. I guess that's true. Because mm-hmm. Trey Parker's been in other things. Wasn't <clears> Trey <throat> Parker in fucking Despicable Me 3? Maybe. He was, I think he was... He might have been. Guy. I mean, in all fairness, if you want a guy who can do a bunch of voice acting, you get him. You know what I mean? Because Trey Parker can do a bunch of voices. So you would get him for stuff like that. How many... Because... How many... Because uh, Trey probably does way more Trey voices does a than... a fuck ton Way more, more than, on Zell Park yeah. than Matt, right? Matt is mostly a writer and producer. Um, Trey's the performer. <clears throat> Trey's the performer. Like, Matt, <clears throat> they both split the kids. Like, they're both 50-50 on the kids. But as far as, like, all of the other ancillary characters, I would say Trey Parker is about 90% of all the other characters. Um, it is that different. Um, Matt also said on the, on his first day, this is the first movie I've ever acted for any director other than Trey. And I've never acted all that much to begin with. Before shooting, I'm thinking that I'm out of my element. But I knew Trey and Dion, my old buddies, would be there, so I was ki- I, w- I could kind of hide behind them and ease into it. But on the first day, it rained, so we changed to an indoor set. And in my very first scene, Robert Vaughn stepped in. It's just the two of us alone, and... Oh my god. Overload. I stood there, watching, and went, Oh, so that's acting. His next scene was with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who he said was kind of a dick that day. He doesn't elaborate, unfortunately. Okay, well. I listened to a podcast with him talking about it. He doesn't elaborate why. He's just like, apparently, like, basically it was just like, apparently he's a normal, he's a good guy, but that day he was a dick. I don't know. Hey, sometimes you just <clears> catch <throat> people on the yeah, wrong... Just it's, happens. it's the unfortunate part of, like, you could be the nicest person ever, yeah. but maybe something happened to you that day and you're a dick. Yeah. But when are you ever going to meet Kareem Abdul-Jabbar <laughs> ever exactly. again? Exactly. So now you have this permanent this, moment this in time, time of like, or... wow, he was a dick, but, you know, you never know. Um, the only thing that helped make it, make it all easier, he said, was because David Zucker is so cool. That and only, that and, uh, I only had two lines that day. <laughs> Fair enough. That helps. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the f- fifth championship in the driveway scene was an exact copy of what it was like in real life, down to the actual scoreboard they used. 
During the filming of the scene, Zucker, who was watching in the monitor, stopped and laughed to himself, saying, it's incredible, it looks exactly the same. So, all of that shit was how he did it. Like, to the point where, I guess they actually had a championship, and there were people sitting around watching it, which is kind of amazing. Um, Many of the reappearing teammates are friends of Zucker, and actual original members of the Zucker driveway game. Asked by, <clears throat> asked by the director to be in the movie to pay homage to the origins of basketball. Zucker would always laugh and say... Uh, laugh at the way... This is a weird one. Zucker would always laugh at the way Trey runs. It's, like, uh, it's unlike any other running I've ever seen. Trey was constantly made fun of for the way he played, with Matt saying, Trey plays basketball different than anybody in the world. He thinks it's normal. It isn't. Um, <clears throat> the happy dance was spontaneously created one night and was actually incorporated into several scenes of the film. Watching all of this finally got Yasmin Bleef to remark, You guys aren't quite right, are you? <laughs> no truer words have ever been spoken, Miss Bleef. Uh, wow, that's a weird sentence to say. Miss Bleef. Well, I'm just like, what is she thinking? I don't know. No, I'm not. She's coming off the set of Baywatch not, going, not, What the fuck are these not, assholes? Not that, like, the, I don't want to disparage the cast of... Uh... Baywatch, but they're not exactly thespians, but at the same time... You take that back, you motherfucker. I will not have you besmirch the good name of Pamela Anderson and tell me she is not a thespian. But you know what I mean? So, like, I... She's... Oh, thespian. No. I'm not gonna make that joke. <laughs> oh, you That's thespian. low-hanging... That is such low-hanging fruit. But we are in the right movie for it. But... You know, so like you're walking around, like I get it. These two ding dongs are walking around making <laughs> dick and fart jokes. Yeah. So you're just like, oh, you guys mm. are morons. But, but come on. Yeah. I'm sure you weren't fucking <clears throat> discussing the New York Times on the set of Baywatch either. Yes, me and Belief is a national treasure. Damn it. <laughs> Has she done anything outside of Baywatch? Not that I know of. Yeah. Like I don't. I think she disappeared off the face of the I'm earth. Not after that, I'm Baywatch. not in that demo, buddy. Yeah. <clears throat> While Zucker is strict about adhering to the written word, once it's settled on, <laughs> once it's settled on, he always leaves plenty of leeway for improv- improvisation. It's a parody movie you're making, buddy. Yeah, working with the material on the set until he's finally certain he's got the joke right. Jenny McCarthy claims David won't let us go until he's laughing, not chuckling, but laughing hard. That's the only thing I have from Jenny McCarthy. Yep. Because Let's just leave that I'm alone. Don't. Yeah. Let's just leave that alone. You all know why. We'll just leave that, because this is not a political show. So, nope. there you go. <clears throat> One such instance was the hospital scene, with what they thought was a dying Joey. Zucker calls it a burst of ad-lib energy. Parker and Stone began doing their dialogue with Scottish brogues, and then spinning off into a menagerie of characters, watching it in amazement. David Zucker commented, These guys are... And then stopped. Sur- and then stopped. He was searching for the right description. The word would be nuts, Bo Lo- Bob Locash filled in, which is true. Mm-hmm. They're nuts. <clears throat> the exchange of the chewing tobacco was also improvised. Oh, God. Which is fucking amazing, because I would have assumed that was written. But no, apparently, like, imagine being there that day. Like, I guess the idea is he's supposed to just hand him the fucking thing, and then maybe he was going to go, Ugh, and drop it or something. But he just fucking puts it in his mouth and spits it. Imagine being on the set that day going, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> what is wrong with you two? <laughs> um, I love these little facts. The word dude is spoken a total of 98 times throughout the movie. 21 of these are doing Coop, during Coop and Reamer's dude argument, which of course was played in its entirety in our intro because that is one of the greatest scenes in cinema history. The Legacy. Yes, it has one. Uh, Yasmin Bleeth and Jenny McCarthy were nominated for the 1998 Golden Raspberry Awards for, respectively, Worst Actress and Worst Supporting Actress. I'm finding it more and more apparent mm. that, as this show continues, we're going to have far more Razzie-nominated movies than Oscar-nominated oh, yes. movies on this, on this particular However, podcast. what they lost to are both movies we will definitely get into and I will enjoy ripping the shit out of. Bleeth lost to not one, but all of the Spice Girls... For Spice World, and McCarthy lost to Maria Patillo for the 1998 Godzilla. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, yeah, because both fucking train wrecks. Yep. <clears throat> In response to a negative review from Roger Ebert, Parker and Stone named the South Park second season episode "Roger Ebert Should Lay Off the Fatty Foods." 
which, despite its title, did not feature him. Parker and Stone also referenced basketball's negative reception in South Park's Season 8 episode, The Passion of the Jew, where at one point Stan tells Kenny as they attempt to get a refund for the tickets they bought to see Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. This is about being able to hold bad filmmakers responsible. This is just like when we got our money back for basketball. I love South Park. Uh, after, after the movie, many basketball leagues sprouted up all over North America. The most recent one I was able to find was held by, a dec- by Declaration Brewing Company in Denver, Colorado. Ironic. Hmm. Stating, Declaration is excited to pronounce the first ever fictional no longer, not true, basketball league in Denver. This game, combining baseball, basketball, and the art of distraction, will be held in round-robin play for five weeks with a final tournament week to cap off the league. Should have been, like, been like 11 months like <laughs> the playoffs were for basketball. Uh, the tournament was held from October 10th to November 14th, 2018. I tried hard. I could not find out who won. Uh, there was also I if we can YouTube that. Yeah, probably. There's also a league in Australia in 2016. Damn it. I All right. need to find one in Toronto, I'm telling you, you right now. need to start one in Toronto. We could do that. <laughs> There's nothing saying we can't. Um, you heard it here first. We're not doing it. <laughs> you never know. We could. Stuff. Um, Matt and Trey talked about a basketball, too, as being a trailer. Like if Michael Bay directed it. Stay, <laughs> starting in a place like Calcutta, in a black marketplace, where under a sheet is a nuclear bomb. Smash cut to Matt playing chess, drinking tea in a horrible-looking turban. Constant cuts to the three main actors and a ton of explosions having nothing to do with basketball. And just have the title card read, Basketball 2. And they talked about having to put it in actual movie theaters. Because Trey and Matt are idiots. Because they would pay to do this. For a trailer to a movie that's not going to happen... And a trailer to a movie that doesn't make any sense. This is what happens when strange people make a lot of money. I gotta tell you, this this smacks so much of one of my favorite episodes of South Park. One of the best jokes they ever made. Which was during the big time when South Park was becoming the biggest thing on the planet. Where they did the, who is Cartman's father? And they advertised it everywhere that it was going to happen this week. And they literally have the whole premise for the episode come up and just be like, who is it? And they give you all the names and all the names. And now, who is Cartman's father will not be seen this week. Instead, you're going to see an episode of Terrence and Philip. And the whole episode was Terrence and Philip. That might be one of the greatest jokes that they have ever done. And I absolutely love that, but nobody else does. However, <clears throat> with the internet, the internet slang for stupidity, the expression derp, was first used as a line in this film by Matt Stone's character. The term is later used in a number of South Park episodes by Stone and Parker. That led to the spread of the usage in the term. The It was actually said, I don't know if you even heard it, because it's so fucking blink and you miss it. It's... <laughs> I watched it yesterday, so I'm trying to like go through the memory. Bank. It's in a scene um, that is hard to just explain. Um, so they're in a girl's bedroom. Oh, okay. and they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, playing with her underwear and licking, and he's licking the dildo. Or the vibrator, I should say. Please, a little respect. <laughs> right. And then, of course, the joke is, this is my mom's room. So then they're like, oh, oh, oh. When he hands her the vibrator and runs out of the room, he literally goes, derp. And that's hmm. it. Now, the sound probably, probably was just the imp- intention of him vomiting, is my guess, because he's licking the... Whomever old woman, old woman's vibrator. We'll get to the scene. This movie is fucking ridiculous. Yes. And yeah, that's what I'm guessing it was. But then they ended up using it as a term for stupidity, and it's stuck. It's a thing. And this was the first utterance of the word derp. Well done, gentlemen. So there you go. In 1998, it was created. There's your legacy, guys. Mm-hmm. So we get to base kit ball. Yes. We begin with Steve's favorite hmm. a baseball game. <laughs> Um, a very legendary baseball game. Yes. It was a playoff game where Reggie Jackson, hmm. known as Mr. October, mm-hmm. hit three home you runs. You mean Dwayne Zacamore? Hit. <laughs> Which, by the way, I looked it up. Yep. Of course. Yep. That, that, that was accurate. accurate, right? Um, Reggie Jackson hits three home runs in a game, and a young Coop and mm-hmm. Reamer were at that game. Yes. And Coop catches it, and 
You know, like in the opening, one day I'm going to be a big sports star. 